Since 2021, Agile has been huge on the PMP exam. It has become vital to know it and to think it deep and analytically. For that reason, we have a special section for each one of the 35 tasks where we address nothing but Agile. Have you seen people that pretend to be Agile, but they are something different? We commonly encounter people who pretend to be Agile, yet they are something else. All the time, it is that Agile in name only kind of situation where they are doing daily stand-ups and maybe sprint planning. However, they are still using all the predictive traditional phased approach processes and all the significant planning up front, which really defeats the purpose. This is a pretense. If one is planning predictively or using waterfall development, just be honest about it. Do not call it what it is not. Do not say it is agile. So many people are new to Agile they have heard of Kanban, but are just discovering the nuances and process of Agile. Some folks and organizations fear the Agile terrain, which has a basic framework of Scrum. The two most basic frameworks of Agile are Scrum and Kanban. There is really nothing to be concerned or afraid of. Let us discuss their reasoning and see if we can ease people's minds about utilizing Agile. Why people are concerned about Agile First, obviously, it is different. It is hugely different and that always causes a little bit of anxiety. Another reason is that organizations and people often feel it may leave them with a lack of control. They might feel Agile is chaotic, and they are going to lose control. Agile is certainly a change for most people because it uses some crazy terms like decentralizing decision-making. It does not need management in a team. This uniqueness just makes people wary of it. There are so many mechanisms, built-in risk mitigation factors. It is such a transparent process that it is exceedingly difficult for people to hide and do the wrong things. That is really the key. It reduces anxiety because many things are built to help make sure people are making good decisions. This leads to something else. We want to start encouraging organizations and ourselves as well. We want to encourage that concept or belief that experimentation is good. Everything we do is an experiment, so we are going to try something that we believe is the right thing to work on, and we are going to get to the end of whatever it is in a short time. We are going to discover if it was the right thing or not, and if it is not, we will change right there. There is a misconception that you must be in Scrum and nothing else if you are Agile that is utter nonsense. We have what we call a category of smells. Things that do not smell all that is one of them. If we have an organization that says everyone must practice Scrum, they have not really understood the Agile mindset and philosophy. It is supposed to be very flexible. It is supposed to be a situation where you can choose what makes the most sense for your specific context. Scrum and Kanban have some major differences though both are Agile frameworks. One of the big differences is that you are doing these iterations and you are time boxing in Scrum and the expectation is that within that small, perhaps to weak time box, we are encouraging scope to not change that and frame. Well, there are some situations where that is not possible and this is where Kanban may be an option. Imagine if you are doing infrastructure rollouts or operations, you do not know what you are working out tomorrow, let alone to weeks from now. So trying to put in a framework that insists or at least strongly encourages some control within those two weeks is not going to work in every situation. We should be flexible. Every team should have the right to choose the process that makes the most sense. So, it is important for us to not be too concerned about it. 
Agile is actually very simple and straightforward. Scrum Basics Let us talk about Scrum briefly. There are only five ceremonies meetings total in the entire Scrum framework. What are some of the meetings that we have in this Scrum framework? We have the following. Sprint or iteration the time box in which all work occurs. Sprint planning meeting where the team plans the work for the iteration. Daily scrum standups where the team reviews and plans progress. Retrospectives where the team strategizes on improvement steps. Sprint review where we demo our working product to get feedback. There is one more optional meeting known as backlog refinement where the product backlog is refined continuously. It usually happens in the middle of a current sprint to prepare up coming user requests requirements for future sprints. There are three artifacts. Product backlog contains all the work requests and requirements. Sprint backlog a subset of the product backlog. It contains work for the sprint. The potentially shippable increment or working product, it is the potentially shippable piece of product that we are generating. We consider that an artifact. It is a measure of progress. In Agile review, we are either done or we are not. It is a very binary decision. Burn down charts are considered a kind of fourth artifact. If you read the Scrum Guide, they are really only three artifacts. It does not include the burn charts as additional artifacts. The Scrum Guide You might have noticed that the Scrum Guide does not include Epics or the Minimum Viable Product MVP. That is intentional. If you have not had an opportunity to read it, I strongly recommend you go to Scrum Guides or to get the free PDF. It has got different languages that you can download it from, which is very helpful. The Scrum Guide is the framework. It is the description of how Scrum works, the artifacts, the basic process, and the roles. The Scrum Guide is quite small, with only about 13 pages in comparison to the Pumbach, which has close to 370 pages. The size of the Scrum Guide is intentional. We want it to be small and lightweight rather than big. The reason is, if you think about traditional or predictive processes, you are being presented with everything you could possibly do with the intent that you tailor down. You remove things that are not necessary for you. Agile Mindset in Agile, we take a different approach you are given the absolute bare bones or the minimum framework that will work for you, then you are expected to tailor up. You add complexity only when you recognize that you need it. It is a different approach. Choose which makes the most sense for you, but the idea is to keep it simple, keep it lightweight, do not put a lot of process overhead. Something else about Agile is we rely very heavily on people being adults. We expect our team members to be adults and do their jobs, and we should not have to drive them. We rely on that. We rely on the people aspect of the process, but we still have some very good risk mitigation techniques in the meantime as well. There are many good books on the people and psychological aspects of Scrum and Agile that one can tap into. Let us look at the people aspect for a minute. As I mentioned, we rely very heavily on the people. It is one of the Agile manifesto values and that is an individual's interactions over processes and tools. We do value the processes and tools. Scrum is a kind of process. There are lots and lots of tools out there that we make use of, but what we really care about more and what makes everything work are the people doing the work and how they interact with each other. We really expect a heavy level of collaboration. 
We encourage face-to-face -face whenever possible because there is a lot of collaboration that goes into the process. We encourage that. And not just collaboration within the team, but also collaboration directly with our customers. We want to talk to the people asking for things because they are the ones who know what they want or should know what they want. Although we know they do not always know what they want. But at least by talking with them, we can discover it. That is the goal. So, we rely very heavily on that. And the other aspect of it is again, we rely on people being adults, you know, doing their jobs. You must hire well. Ensure that we have motivated people and give them an environment where they can stay motivated because you know how it works. We can hire people that really want to do the job, but if the environment is not good, it can squash them, so we really want to try to build up the kind of environment where people can do great things. If we have people who are motivated and do a great job, then the leadership can leave them alone to get on with the job. Leadership can then do what leadership should be doing, which is support the team in their efforts to get their work done. We should never have a situation where people need to be driven. If you have had situations where people needed to be driven, then you know that it is a real problem and it should not be happening. If it is happening, we have a deeper problem. It is not the process that has the problem. We may have some behavioral issues and we need to dive in and fix those. In the Agile space, we put a significant effort into managing the psychological, behavioral welfare, and social structures that we put in place for the teams. The Scrum Master needs to be an expert in social and soft skills. We rely more on the soft skills than we do on their knowledge of the practices. Both are important, but imagine if you have a team that is just not motivated. They just do not want to do their jobs, or we have one person on the team that is not behaving well as a team member. We really want to get in there, fix those social interactions, and get rid of conflict or encourage healthy conflict. We really want to focus on those kinds of issues. There are a lot of project managers in the world. They have huge PMP certification investments and we do not want to lose that. However, in the Agile community, the project manager role is not formally recognized in most frameworks. That does not mean that we do not need project management. We still need it. The way we treat project management in the Agile space is that it is more of a role. Sometimes the team, scrum master, or someone on the team can take the project manager's role if it is not a complex situation. If it is very simple stuff, you may not necessarily need a project manager. Suppose there is more complexity, especially when you are starting to scale multiple teams together. In that case, that adds a lot more complexity to your environment. That is where we would say it is still the role of the project manager. Still, we would most likely want to have somebody dedicated to that role because there is so much complexity involved. There is technically no such thing as an agile project manager, but that does not necessarily mean that we do not need project management skills. The fear that people have about not having a project manager can be laid aside. So, do know, the things that you learn from the Pumbak guide are useful. In Agile we do not throw all that stuff out. We want to bring those kinds of things into play, even in the Agile community. Again, do not worry about Agile taking or replacing all your jobs. That is not it s goal, not at all. We still need project managers and we still need project management. Managing conflict. People TASK1 manage conflict. 
When it comes to managing conflict, some people might say, oh, I do not want to get involved. Let them sort it out themselves, while that could be an appropriate approach in certain circumstances, a servant leader, whoever that may be, project manager, scrum master, or other needs to do what is necessary to help team members overcome conflict when it becomes an impedance to the team's progress. The Pumbach Guide reads conflict is inevitable in a project environment. Sources of conflict include scarce resources, scheduling priorities, and work styles. Team ground rules, group norms, and solid project management practices like communication planning and role definition reduce the amount of conflict. So, if a servant leader has done his or her job up front, the goal should be minimizing conflict right at the point ground rules are set. It reads, successful conflict management results in greater productivity and positive working relationships. When managed properly, differences of opinion can lead to increased creativity so, there is nothing wrong with disagreeing or having a different perspective. If the differences become a negative factor, project team members are initially responsible for the resolution. If conflict escalates, the project manager or servant leader should help facilitate a satisfactory resolution. So, it is not enough to say, oh go do it yourself, what if it becomes disruptive? This is something servant leaders should be looking at. According to the Pumbach Guide, conflict should be addressed early and usually in private using a direct collaborative approach. If disruptive conflict continues, formal procedures may be used including disciplinary actions. The success of project managers in managing their project teams often depends on their ability to resolve conflict. So, this is a skill one should absolutely have whether you are a leader of large or small teams. The success of project managers in effectively managing conflict depends on the project manager's leadership, communication, and interpersonal skills. Various project managers have different ways of resolving conflict, but while doing so, it is important to realize that certain factors influence how and when conflict is resolved. These factors as documented in the Project Management Body of Knowledge Guide include 1. Importance and intensity of the conflict If it is not a big deal, people just shove it aside and say, all right, I am just going to avoid this. I am just going to walk out. I do not care. I do not need this. This is not critical for my job. 2. Time pressure for resolving conflict If there is time pressure, for example a deadline for a client tomorrow which involves a conflict situation, then you might want to solve that conflict quicker. 3. Relative power of the people involved Imagine there is a massive power differential, you have got someone who is a C-level executive, say a CFO, COO, and you have got someone who is down on the shop floor having conflict with that person. Well, there could be a power sway, and that executive may just use a force direct approach. I am not saying this is best, but that could be the case. 4. Importance of maintaining a good relationship After conflict perhaps the other person concedes their position and compromises because they recognize the importance of maintaining a good relationship. 5. Motivation to resolve conflict on a long-term or short-term basis if you are motivated to resolve the conflict for whatever reason, you could end up choosing one of these styles withdraw or avoid, smooth or accommodate, compromise or reconcile, force or direct, collaborate or problem solve. So, that is the opener for this task and hopefully that will give you a good perspective of what exactly is being discussed here. TASK Manage Conflict Enablers 1. 
We want to understand the source and the stage of the conflict. 2. We want to analyze the context for the conflict. 3. We want to evaluate, recommend, and reconcile the appropriate conflict resolution solution. 1.1 Understand THE Source OFTHE Conflict What are sources of conflict? Several things. Reward systems, scarce resources, uncertainty over lines of authority and differentiation. Perhaps the boss says, all right, because Phil did such a great job last week, he's going to lunch with me this week, and I am going to spend time developing him as a leader. Well, that could cause conflict. Various sources of conflict exist on project teams. Sources of conflict Sources of conflict include Scarce resources Scheduling priorities Personal work styles. Work methods or issues. Personality. Attitude. Power struggle. Perceived unfairness. Different values. Differing opinions. Other. Stages of conflict. 1. Latent stage participants not yet aware of conflict. 2. Perceived stage participants aware a conflict exists. 3. Felt stage stress and anxiety. 4. Manifest conflict is open and can be observed. 5. Aftermath outcome of conflict resolution or dissolution. Let us examine these stages in further detail. 1. Latent stage The people who are in conflict are not yet aware that a conflict may exist. For example, a project may have been turned in late to a client, but senior management is not aware of it yet, so the participants are not aware there is a conflict brewing. 2. Perceived stage, this is when the people involved in a conflict become fully aware that there is a conflict, such as when senior management discovers that the project has been delivered late and goes to speak to the employee about it. 3. Felt stage stress and anxiety are felt by one or more of the participants due to the conflict. 4. Manifest stage the stage during which the conflict can be observed. The manifest stage can take several shapes including emails, phone calls, phone messages, face-to-face -face meetings, or any situation in which the conflict could be observed. 5. Aftermath stage which takes place when there is some outcome of the conflict, such as a resolution to or dissolution of the problem. One point to analyze THE context F O R T H E conflict. Conflict is a necessity for team performance and project success. Project teams that are not stimulated by healthy debate discussions and disagreements quickly fall into inertia, which can ultimately lead to project failure. It is not a bad thing to have conflict. Conflict when managed correctly can actually work massive wonders in the team's favor. 1.3 Evaluate, Recommend, Reconcile THE Appropriate Conflict Resolution Solution How do you know which one to choose? When you get questions on the exam that border around conflict, it is up to you with your understanding of real world and problem solving with your understanding of the Pumbach guide to assess it and understand if it is a short-term conflict or if it is a long-term conflict. Someone cuts you off on the road in a very dangerous situation. What should you do? Pursue them angrily and flash your lights at them, or should you just ignore it? Of course you should ignore it, because you are never going to see that person again anyway, so just let them go. It really depends on the question, 
But once you have great command of what PMI is saying in the Pumbach guide and the Agile practice guide and the question itself, everything else falls into place. Conflict resolution techniques. Withdrawal or avoidance postponing addressing the problem. This technique never results in resolution. This is a lose-lose resolution technique. The key word for withdraw or avoid is the word postpone. You are going to postpone the issue to be better prepared to or be resolved by others. Another word is retreat. This is backing away and saying, you know what, I am not going to go into this. Those are strategies that echo withdraw or avoid. Smoothing or accommodating emphasizing agreement as opposed to differences of opinion. This is a lose-lose resolution technique. The key word here is concede. You are giving up your position, you are saying for the for the greater good, for the peace of the team, I am just going to let it go. I am just going to give up my position. I am going to let them have their way, let them have it. A key phrase for this is emphasizing areas of agreement. Someone might say, we are on the same team anyway. We might as well just forget this. This is emphasizing areas of agreement, areas of commonality rather than differences of opinion. Compromise or reconcile, making all parties happy to resolve the conflict temporarily or partially. Neither side wins nor loses with this technique. The key words here are temporarily, temporal, or partial. We call this a band aid in the United States. We call it a plaster in Europe. This suggests is a temporal solution. You cannot wear plaster forever it just helps you get through the problem for a while. Forcing directing one party forcing a solution on the other. This is a win-lose resolution technique in which one party wins and the other loses. The main thing here is power position. In other words, there is a power differential and the word emergency is key. If there is an emergency, there is absolutely nothing wrong in using force or direct. Depending on the factors involved, we could choose to use any one of these techniques as a conflict response. This was well summarized in the Thomas Kilman Conflict Mode Instrument shown below. Thomas Kilman Conflict Mode Instrument The Importance of Team Dynamics in the People Domain One of the main tasks of the project manager is to keep track of the team dynamics and inspire collaboration and solve problems. Understanding Tuckman S stages of team development could help the project manager understand team dynamics. Tuckman S stages OFTEAM development Tuckman S ladder. Tuckman S model for team development identifies five stages of team development which project teams must go through before the team can achieve maximum effectiveness. Tuckman S stages of team development are forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. As a team evolves, the team consciously or subconsciously moves from one stage to the next. Due to changing circumstances, teams may go through the development cycle several times each. Graham A team in the performing stage could revert to the storming stage due to a change in team members. 1. Forming in this first stage of team development, the team is formed. The team meets for the first time, members get to know one another and learn about the project. Team members act independently at this stage and are on their best behavior. 2. Storming this second stage in team development is the most challenging. As project management approach, project work and technical decisions are addressed by the team, team members offer opposing ideas about roles, responsibilities, goals, and expectations. Conflicts may arise due to interpersonal differences. Teams may or may not move out of this stage. 
The more mature the team members are, the faster the team is able to leave the storming stage. 3. Norming trust and motivation levels increase in this third stage as team members get more comfortable with each other and more familiar with the project. 4. Performing at this stage, the team is high-performing, functioning as a cohesive unit. Team members are interdependent, autonomous, and able to make decisions without supervision. 5. Adjourning in this stage, the project is completed, and the team is disbanded. This stage is also known as the mourning stage due to uncertainty about the future and a sense of loss felt by team members. In addition to understanding team dynamics, the project manager should also be capable of resolving conflict that could harm the project. It is a key capability that a project manager should process. Where conflict management skills and interventions with the team are concerned, the project manager should be able to 1. Set ground rules so that team members and stakeholders are fully aware of team rules for engagement and conflict resolution. 2. Recognize when conflict has occurred or is about to occur. 3. Resolve conflict. Let us examine these one by one. 1. Set ground rules Ground rules for the team to be guided by in terms of DOS and do nots. Through ground rules, the project team will understand what constitutes acceptable behavior versus unacceptable behavior. To set ground rules, the project manager should work with various entities such as functional managers, resource managers, and human resource management while establishing ground rules, especially when in doubt. The project manager should establish project policies, processes, and procedures in accordance with the project management office PMO or organizational standards at the start of the project. These ground rules should be very clear and should enable the team members and stakeholders immediately understand what they should do in the event of conflict or misunderstandings. These rules should not just be verbal rules but documented written rules that the team can refer to when in doubt. 2. Recognize conflict The project manager should be keen on observing the team and conversing with the team to deduce when conflict is brewing or has occurred. The project manager should recognize areas of potential conflict and seek to minimize it before it occurs. This goes back to observation and conversation. Through observation of the team and stakeholders and conversation with the stakeholders, the project manager will recognize potential areas and situations of conflict. The project manager should routinely solicit feedback from team members on conflict resolution. While this is going on, the project manager should also understand that there is a responsibility to respond to issues and concerns in a timely fashion. 3. Resolve conflict The project manager should resolve or facilitate the removal of conflict where it arises within the project. The major focus should be on conflict resolution so that the project can proceed as originally planned without those impediments. To reduce the amount of conflict, the project manager should rely on team ground rules to set the tone for engagement of team members, group norms, and solid project management practices such as communication, planning, role definition, and open channels of communication. When conflict management is intentionally and successfully implemented into the project team, it will result in greater chances of project success, greater productivity, and positive working relationships between team members. When differences of opinion are managed maturely and effectively, it could lead to increased creativity and even better decision-making. 
Where differences between team members becomes a negative factor, project team members are at first responsible for conflict resolution. If the conflict escalates then the project manager needs to step in and help facilitate a satisfactory conflict resolution. When conflict emerges, it should first be addressed early in the process and in private, using a direct collaborative team approach or problem-solving approach. However, if disruptive conflict persists then formal procedures within the organization may be used and these could include disciplinary actions. So how do you understand the source and stage of conflict? By understanding the five stages of team development, forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning and reading from body language and nonverbal cues as well as actual things being said and language being used. Agile Thinking CAPFO are managing conflict. There are many cases where we do not have a project manager. However, let us describe a little bit of the difference between the project manager and the scrum master. The scrum master is a role in the scrum framework, and we typically have someone who plays the same basic role in Kanban. The purpose of the person is less about project management. It is actually very little about project management and much more about working with the team to improve their psychological well-being, their social structure, and making sure they have the best day possible. That is what we want the Scrum Master to be focusing on the people aspect as well as the process aspect. Now, project managers tend to focus more on the project. That is what they should be focusing on. They should not have to be focusing on driving people daily. Agile helps project managers get back to what they are supposed to be doing, and that is managing projects. Project managers focus typically on budgets and report outs and stakeholder management. All the things you would normally do from a project perspective, all valuable stuff. Let us look at how conflict management works in a scrum team or an agile team in general. It is usually more of a scrum master's responsibility than a project manager's responsibility. Scrum masters are people focused. They are team focused, so part of their job would be to step in to help management de-escalate or reduce conflict wherever possible and sometimes encourage healthy conflict. Healthy conflict can be useful for diversity of ideas. We want to encourage that. We want to encourage the ability for people to talk and disagree. That is very useful, but we also desire the potential to bring those disagreements to a healthy resolution. That is what we are looking for, and that is part of what our Scrum Master should be focusing on. How you manage conflict in an agile space is not much different from how you would in any other space. It is the same social skills and the same soft skills you need. The different stages of conflict all the way from to people just having a minor disagreement all the way to a world war. Basically, the more conflict escalates, what you want to do is to bring different techniques into play to help reduce that conflict to make sure that we are building a good healthy, stable team that does not hate each other. These people need to trust each other at a very deep level, which is another aspect of managing conflict. It is not just resolving conflict but it is also building an environment where people feel comfortable that conflict can happen, and this requires a great deal of trust. Scrum masters will spend a lot of time, especially in the early days of forming a team, trying to build up trust. And there are all kinds of different techniques. One of the things you can do to help build trust faster in a team is to help the team and encourage the team to show vulnerability. If a team member can show vulnerability amongst their other teammates and they do not get made fun of then they are going to be able to trust those people. 
they can say what they need to say even if it is something that people do not want to hear and know that no one is going to ridicule them, put them down, or dismiss them because they said it. A team is a social structure and we want to build that trust up very quickly. There are ways that we can introduce vulnerability. One of the things you can do is have every team member acknowledge something they did wrong. Just something, some mistake they made over the course of a sprint. You usually do a lot of these things in retrospectives. That is why it is such an important session. Retrospectives should be done in predictive plan-driven projects as well. Imagine building your team, and you are also not just focusing on building the product. Still, you are also focusing on building a great team. The productivity that you get out of this is huge. In a retrospective, you just have the team. Or the team members admit something, one thing they did wrong, raise their hand and say, okay, so in this sprint, I did this wrong and I acknowledged that I did this and I thank you for helping me out. This is what I am going to do to prevent it in future you have acknowledged you did something wrong. You have acknowledged that somebody helped. You have acknowledged that you are going to do something about it and not do it next time. Those are all powerful things to help build up trust in a team. That really helps also in managing or even preventing negative conflict. It is very, very refreshing because in the world of PMP, we talk about conflict resolution more in a robotic way, offering theories to how you do it. We have smoothing and avoiding. Even though some of those things might be used in this world, it is not robotically disseminated. It is more of the mindset that we are dealing with humans with some fluid, easy, dynamic things to do. G-O-L-D-Z-O-N-E-O-F-E-X-A-M Expectations People Task 1 Manage Conflict Conflict is managed on agile projects with a mindset of collaboration over negotiation. Sometimes disagreement could yield a richer and more long-lasting result. Hyper-norming where teams agree on every single thing is not a healthy state. Team members should have the courage to speak up respectfully. Conflict is de-escalated by the scrum master. In cases where conflict is not disruptive to team performance it should be encouraged to be handled at the team level but where it is disruptive it should be managed and confronted by de-escalation strategies and tactics of a servant leader. Remember the five stages of team development Tuckman S. Ladder. Understand the five approaches to resolving conflict and be ready to tackle situational questions with hidden, implied, or open conflict. Also be sure to know the order of enablers which is rather logical. Also expect the unexpected and be ready to roll with it. People TASK 1 QUIZ 1. Conflict seems to be brewing among team members and you are not sure why. Tensions seem high and you feel conflict escalating. What should you do first? A. Interpret the source and stage of the conflict. B. Analyze the context for the conflict. C. Evaluate recommend reconcile the appropriate conflict resolution solution. D. Explain to the team members that they must get along. 2. Conflict seems to be at a heightened level among team members over new bonus structures shared by management. Velocity has considerably dropped since the last sprint and it has become destructive. In analyzing the context of the conflict, you realize that certain team members have received a pay raise over work that all the team contributed to. Tensions seem high and you feel conflict escalating. What should you do next? A. 
Interpret the source and stage of the conflict. B. Analyze the context for the conflict. C. Evaluate recommend reconcile the appropriate conflict resolution solution. D. Report to senior management. This concludes the sample chapter of PMP exam immersion. You could purchase the PDF version of this book and have Microsoft Edge or some other text-to-voice application read it aloud to you. Please find links to this book below or somewhere on this page. Not only does this book help educate you for the PMP exam, it could also make you a better project manager. All the very best in all of your endeavors.